Hey, it's Tom, and today we're going to talk about one-shot learning. In this video, I will explain you what is one-shot learning, how we can use this technique to create an object detection model using just one provided sample, and then we will create a CoreML model and use an iOS app to detect this object on provided photos. Okay, let's go. What is one-shot learning? In general, when you're going to create an object detection model, you have to collect a lot of data, photos of the same thing in different scenarios, bright, dark, in different angles, on different backgrounds. For example, if you are going to create an object detection model for dogs, you also have to collect photos of different dogs, big, small, dark, bright, and so on. A lot of work to be done. But there are some objects that are very regular, like road signs, company logos, Still, in this case, you have to collect a lot of photos of, of these objects in different scenarios. And you can notice that you will take a lot of photos of exactly the same thing in different angles, in different light. So there should be a way to automate it, right? Yes, there is a way. This way is called one-shot learning. So one-shot learning is a technique that allows to use one or couple samples to, and use synthetic augmentation to create enough data to train neural network. And here we come to to recreate. To recreate is an open source tool created by Apple. It simplifies creating machine learning models. It hides whole logic layer, so you don't have to be an expert to use it. The good thing is that it allows us to easily export created models to CoreML format so you can use them in your iOS projects, in macOS projects, in watchOS projects, and even in tvOS apps. So how does it work? To recreate uses provided samples, provided by you, of course. Uh, it can be one or couple samples uh, of, of image of an object which will be de detected. And it comes with built-in background images. Of course, you can provide your own background images, but if you don't want to collect a lot of background images, you don't have to. Uh, so to recreate uses synthetic augmentation to create a lot of images of, your, of, of, the, of the object you pro provided, and then uses them to create an object detection model. Okay, so let's go to the code because there is probably no better way to explain the details than in the code. Okay, let's start coding. I will skip the to recreate installation because it's fairly easy. Link to the to recreate repository with uh, installation guide will be below the video, same as links to the training script repository and the iOS project repository that we will go through later on. Okay, let's jump to the training script. So as you see, it's all written in Python. So at first we have to import to recreate and then we load all images from scaled images directory into training images as frame. Uh, there was only one image there. And the S frame, if you are familiar with R or pandas, uh, it's a tabular data structure. If you are not, you can think about Excel. Uh, the difference between Excel and S frame is that uh, each column has to contain the same amount of rows. So even if they are empty, they have to be on, on place. The, the difference between uh, the frames used in Pandas or R and the S frame used by to recreate is that S frame keeps data on your disk, not in your memory. So um, even if you don't have a lot of RAM, then uh, you can create a big models with big amount of, of data because all data will be still kept on your disk. Okay, so um, as you see, the, the path for the, the image is pretty long. And so it may be easier to create a label column. So we can uh, use the provided path and change it a little bit. And we can use explore to check how it looks. And yeah, we have now three columns. Uh, the first is path. The second is preview of the image and the third is label, which will be used to train the model. And in, 
it's not always easy uh, to to create to, to gather all images in in similar size and sometimes uh, you will have to resize the image the images uh, because um, it's a known problem of to recreate all provided samples should be around 500 per 500 pixels if the images are too big like 4k uh, the algorithm has problems to to uh, use synthetic augmentation and as a result there are some uh, images provided to uh, training um, phase of of the object de detection that don't really have your object on them so uh, the training will be ineffective but that's not a, a, a problem uh, i created a not scaled directory uh, which contains a red version of this uh, Nike logo because Nike logo can appear in a different versions it's, it, it can be red, grey, black, white and uh, with, with Nike title, without it uh, so in this uh, phase uh, we will create a, a single um, image uh, and create a new S-frame uh, with only this image and the same label as, as the, the, the previous and add it to existing training images and yeah, as you see we have now two elements in our S-frame and uh, the, the black logo and red logo and they have the same label so the model uh, when will be trained uh, will recognize them as a one object, Nike okay and Eventually, if the image is too big, you can also use uh, to recreate image analysis to resize it. But uh, I was unable to, to find a good uh, Nike logo without background and big enough to, to need to re resize it. And okay, so now um, we can uh, ask the to recreate to create a um, preview of synthetic training data so it will take some time um, let's wait okay we are one and a half minute later uh, the synthetic Im images were created uh, so as we see um, to recreate used 951 background images uh, to, to create uh, training data for each provided sample so in this case we provided two samples uh, there are 1900 images which will be used to train object de detection model and mm, please remember that if you will, will be running this first time to recreate will download the data uh, from repository with the background images and it's something around three gigabytes so it may take up to a couple minutes so please wait okay so we have uh, 1900 training images and let's explore them how they look okay uh, as we see there are many images here um, the previous is not big so it's not very easy to to see but yeah you see there's a Nike logo which is ro rotated and here we comes to the second problem so like the company logo may be ro rotated in different angles and in to recreate documentation Apple claims that they only rotate images by 20 de degrees uh, clockwise and counterclockwise um, which is not true as we see so you don't really need to provide uh, rotated versions of your logo uh, or um, sample of any other object to, to be recognized because to recreate does it uh, and so you don't have to and yeah there are many images you see that uh, in this case logo is not only ro ro rotated uh, but also its angle is changed in this case we have a horse with Nike logo we have uh, a bay and so on yeah so there are many images and it's probably pointless to 
to look through all of them. And the next step is to use a create method provided by to recreate to create a real model. And in this case, it can take up to a couple hours, even on modern GPU, like, like my uh, 2017 Mac Pro with AMD Radeon. Um, so for, for one sample yesterday, it took about three hours to create object detection model. So do not sit here for six hours. Uh, I will only put here the method which is used to train the, um, the object de detection model. And then we can save the model to modify it and work it, work with it later on um, in the to recreate format. And we can also export this model to CoreML format so we can use it in Xcode for different platforms uh, um, provided by Apple, like iOS, tvOS, macOS, and watchOS. So you don't have to create uh, a CoreML model and validate um, in, in Xcode. You can also just read a uh, model in, in to recreate and check. So a uh, couple days ago, I used the older MacBook to train an object detection model for a logo of company I'm working in, Tivix. And as you see, I loaded this model here and it took 11 hours on 2015 MacBook, if I'm correct, uh, to train this object detection model. And during the training process, you are not able to use the com computer, trust me, uh, it's, it's pain. So to save our time, uh, I will use the model I created in the past and we can also test um, this this model uh, using pro provided methods. So we load uh, one of the test images and uh, use um, loaded model to make a pre prediction and draw it on a sample image. So yeah, as you see, um, 83% of, uh, of being sure that there is a TVX logo. And yeah, that's working pretty fine, I believe. Uh, we can test different images like, like this one. Yeah, the confidence is lower, 37%. And we can test on another image yeah still pretty confident like 63 percent but but don't think it's it's uh, it's perfect in some cases like this this is pretty obvious and pretty simple um, there's no object detected on 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 this image even though the logo is big is is clear to to see so you have to play with the the model and don't think it's uh, it's perfect. Um, you can play with another background uh, images provided by you or just test different versions of, of the image you, you provide for, for training. Okay, so if we exported the CoreML model here, we can use it in our Xcode projects. Um, so we can simply drag and drop it to the Xcode. Uh, I prepared a really uh, simple project here and uh, there's only one view controller uh, which has the preview and just the label to to load the new photo uh, i will use the library because i put some uh, sample images there so um, as you see we have a variable which is uh, the tvx object detector uh, so you're creating a model, uh, initializing it using the name of the model. Uh, when you drag the model to the uh, Xcode, you can also see the details. So the input has to be 416 per 416 pixels. Um, and the, the output is the confidence matrix and coordinates matrix. So we can use them to create Oh, I will clear the output. Uh, 
so we can use them to uh, locate the object on the provided image. Uh, of course, the, the source for, for this uh, project will be also provided. And there's only one function, uh, take photo, which will load uh, the, the photo li library. And then we will um, use the provided image to run the prediction. Okay, so let's start the simulator and uh, I will explain you how this is working. The code is pretty simple and I think it's, uh, it's pretty easy to understand. Okay, so let's load. Yeah, the app is working. Uh, the, the model is, 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 can load up to a couple of seconds, so it's sometimes worth to add uh, some spinner or some indicator for, for user. Um, let's take a photo. I, I provided a couple examples. So yeah, maybe this one. And as you see in the output, uh, we have the confidence matrix, 83%, and the matrix with coordinates of the logo is uh, it's like in the middle of the picture, somewhere here. Yeah, I think that's, 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 that's pretty okay. So let's go to, to the code. So image picker returns us uh, an, an image. Uh, if there is no image, we're, we're just uh, closing the, the method. Mm, the input size is 416, as we mentioned. So at first, we just need to scale the image uh, to, to the uh, size expected by, by the model. Then we can uh, put it in a preview. And then there's more important part. Uh, this part of code, uh, as far as I remember, was provided by Apple uh, in one of uh, WWDC uh, videos, maybe last year or even two years ago. I'm not quite sure, but okay. So uh, the expected format of the input for, for object detection model is the uh, core video pixel bu buffer. So we are using the provided image to, to change it into Mm, this uh, core video pixel buffer to load it into this this buffer and when the buffer is ready uh, we are just uh, calling the prediction method on the on our mod model using this this buffer uh, and couple optional parameters uh, IO threshold uh, it's not important in in this case the, m the more important uh, in this case is confidence threshold. So it's the, the minimum value of the confidence uh, that, that, that will filter uh, return uh, re results. So if the threshold will be 0.9, then uh, there will be no result, even if the, in the um, first example, because the uh, yeah, let's, yeah because the confidence for this picture was uh, eighty three percent, and all uh, detections with confidence lower than ninety per percent, so zero point nine, uh, will be ignored. If we will change that to like fifty percent, which is pretty okay, I, I think it's a pretty pretty reliable then we should be fine. So yeah, as, as we see, uh, this was detected. And in this case, if we are using the, the uh, pictures, the, the images that were not recognized in Turi Create, don't expect the CoreML will detect them. Okay, that's it. That's everything uh, I prepared for you today and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I will be more than happy to help you. Uh, as I mentioned, all source code for the iOS project, for training script, and, uh, to, and the link to the tree create will be provided below the video. So see you next time. Bye.